And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the Valley of the Judged. It is Friday night, and you know what that means. <laughs> I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me is my, my good brother here in the temple, the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadara Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence, good brother Xanatrix. Now I can bane him in real time. Again. And while we are done with the absolute bangers of Veil of the Void's classes, at least for now, we are not quite done with the book yet. There's a few things that we have to cover, as well as a grab bag of things we're going to be doing before we get to our conclusions, since we ended up getting some stuff and since we've been doing this whole thing. And remember... Use code 2MONKS to get 10% off your purchase of Veil of the Void. Well, limited while supplies last. Mm -hmm. It's digital, so the supplies are infinite. <laughs> now, I will admit that we have been doing these kind of things out of order from the chapter order. And a big reason for that is I didn't want to create a create an excessive amount of jumping or introducing concepts in the in an or in an order that would be a little bit confusing that's not to say that the page that the chapter order in the actual book is bad it's just a chapter order that doesn't quite fit the way we've handled these valley of the judged episodes in the past so yeah. i had to shift things around because the classes come significantly later than what than what we were doing. Yeah, but that's not to the detriment of the game. It's it's very much that if you were going to use this as the book, uh, as intended as a book, you'd want the sections that come before the classes first because it explains you know some of the more basic game mechanics. Mm -hmm. I ended up jumping into classes relatively early because. Character classes, when they're when they're present in a game, are and even just character creation as a whole, is a good gauge for the style of game that you're dealing with. Yeah, gives us the lay of the land in the quickest possible manner. Mm -hmm. But we have gotten past that, and chapter three, which we're going to be covering this week and next week, is going to be split into two parts because the flow of it, I think, makes the splitting apropos, and the content is going to be more than we can handle in just one week. Now this is going to cover skills, expertise, and the arcane. For this week, we'll be covering skills and expertise, and we'll be covering the arcane next week. Now, the big reason for, do the big reason for doing this, once again, is there's going to the, there's gonna be a few more spells then in some of the classes, once we get to the Mystic Spell List, which is basically the universal spell list that every caster has access to. Yep. Mystic Spells, from what little we've seen thus far, seem useful in ways that aren't always necessarily combat. Yeah, and that's not to say that they're all cantrips, it's just that the, this is the common pool. Mm-hmm. The more specific pool, it is obviously rooted in the classes that have casting abilities, which we've already covered. So, we w so with that said, let's get right into it. And it opens with what classifies a session, which I'm going to skip because there's not because I think most people know what a session is, but then we get into proficiency. Which is going to be familiar to to some, but that but um, it's still going to be something that has to be covered, especially given the whole starting proficiency thing in all of the classes. Yep. So it goes. Every character class has a set of proficiencies. These represent what your character normally uses. In the beginning, characters are not proficient with many things. Did you pick Thaumatech and desire to wield a great chain blade and heavy armor? Are you a field knight that 
and des that desires to use a sniper rifle or a staff, this is where proficiencies come in. As you use the desired weapon and ar weapon armor throughout sessions or train with masters, you can improve proficiency. Given enough time, you can learn to wield anything. When you use armor, weapons, or tools you are not proficient, the following detriments affect you. With armor, movement is reduced by an additional one square, spellcasting difficulty is increased by one, and you do not gain the special abilities of the armor. Weapons, you have minus two bonus dice when attacking with the weapon. Adversaries roll with an auto hit on the flex or dodge checks against you. And with tools, minus two bonus dice and effects are halved. You can still succeed even if you're not proficient, it's just it's not going to be as effective as if you were. I'd say this is kinder than the non-proficiency we see in a lot of skip a lot of um skill based games, as well as the as well as the bigger entries where if you're not proficient, you're pretty much screwed. Yeah, if you're not proficient, you just can't do it at all, or if you try to do it, it's at a severely higher penalty. Mm -hmm. In this case, you you like I think the most damaging one is the fact that you're losing some bonus dice. But even then, you still have a chance to, to succeed, and your success is going to be a little bit hampered, but you'll still succeed. Mm -hmm. Because these detriments represent your character's lack of ability and understanding of the armor or weapon they're using. Anyone can don heavy armor, but that does not mean they have the fortitude to walk efficiently in it, let alone cast magic or attack. I can I can attest to that personally. Do you know how many months it took to train for heavy plate armor in the SCA people? Two and a half months straight. Yeah. Before I became pretty comfortable and the chafing finally stopped. Actors Learn who have had to wear superhero outfits in one form or another have had to go through a significant amount of training to get comfortable in those things, especially heavier stuff. I know I've brought up the RoboCop story, but it's a perfect example of this kind of thing. Because yep. that was a heavy-ass suit, and they were filming in Dallas. What could possibly mm -hmm. go wrong? Uh, I don't know. Heat stroke? He'd have, been he'd, he'd have been lucky just getting just heat stroke. No, the, no he, was losing he was losing pounds every day. I know. Mm -hmm. Oh. That and the whole being trained in mime thing, which... But in, anyway, in the game, every weapon and set of armor has a set proficiency time. The time is typically set in sessions. One-handed weapons, three sessions. Two-handed, five sessions. Armor, three sessions. Items, two sessions. Musical items, ten songs. Spells, seven casts. Unique equipment takes time listed next to them on their equipment list. Each unique weapon has its own time. Mm -hmm. And then we get to mastery. While you use weapons or armor you are proficient in using, you gain additional effects. The more proficient you are with an item, the better you perform. After five sessions of using proficient equipment, you gain mastery with it, gaining the bonuses below. So with heavy armor, adversaries roll with minus one bonus die on attacks against you. The negative movement speed of afflicted by this by this armor is reduced by one minor typo but okay medium armor gain one auto hit die on covert and balance checks and no longer reduces movement speed light armor one auto hit die on charm and our canting checks increase extra movement by an additional square nice so this is this is basically um this is basically the kind of armor mastery feats we've seen in other games, except it, except you're going to get it just by using it, which means no more pay not to suck. Hallelujah. <laughs> and you shall be saved. Um, weapons add plus one pip to a die. Tools, an additional plus one bonus die for checks or an additional effect. I've... So everything um, I've been I've always been cautious of the get better by doing things. Um some ge some games like D like DO2 um handle it 
handle it somewhat better. And if you want to play the odds, you can you can use the ch chance to improve thing that's in basic role playing and he and um hero quest. And but, then if we go to go talk on the more extreme end of things, we'll bring in the classic example of do to get better being broken as hell of the video game Final Fantasy II. Um, if I need to go with something more contemporary, I can bring up the majority of the Elder Scrolls games and why. Even before It Just Works happened, Elder Scrolls was my punching bag. Ah, Morrowind. The game where you could loop enchanting and alchemy until you had infinite of both and then give yourself infinite stats and run so fast you crash the game. Yeah, when it comes to the whole learn by doing thing, it's one of those things that you have to do with a very short leash, otherwise you risk breaking the thing like a twig. Yep. And if I'm being honest, I'm not I'm not exactly high on the idea of using it in video games. In tabletop, it's got a better chance because you've got a GM who can put the kibosh on things. But works well in Guild Wars. I'd say I'd say Guild. Are are you talking Guild Wars one or two? Two. I'd after say you reach, the... after you reach max level, there's the mastery system that allows you to learn new skills and stuff mm -hmm. by wearing a mastery. Technically, wearing the mastery. I say focusing on a specific discipline and doing stuff with that discipline, as well as just your general adventuring to raise the mastery within that discipline. Yeah. I'd say that's a case of the exception proves the rule. Yes. Absolutely. Because even with that, that's a secondary method of advancement, not the primary. Let's say it's the post... I, I guess it would be the post-graduate phase, if you want to use an educational term. Mm -hmm. So definitely secondary, secondary yeah. education. Anyway, then we get to the skill list proper. Indeed. So a character's natural or learned abilities are called skills. Skills are part of the greater virtue system, using specified virtues to determine how many dice to roll for each check. Remember, you get five skill points at character creation to invest into skills, and cannot invest more than two into a single skill with these points. All skills have the same effects with one to six, at in with one to six invested SP. Each skill gains a unique ability at 7 invested points. Interesting. If you roll with 14 plus dice on a skill check, you may add pips to a third die. Every time your character reaches an even level, you gain 1 SP to invest. We are... You may invest up to 6 bonus SP into the same skill. The 7th level must be earned through rolling. Skills may have multiple virtues next to their name, represented by a, represented by a bracket. The primary virtues are always on the left side of the symbol. These are the virtues normally used for the base dice roll. Everything on the right side are secondary virtues. You may only use secondary virtues with an explanation. There's an example here. Crafting's primary virtue is mentality. Suppose, however, the thing you are crafting is large or has many ill-fitting parts. You could make an argument to use power for that check instead. Mm -hmm. So, logical reason to use different virtue could be something you want to think about. Which I'm perfectly fine with, because an issue that can crop up with skill systems, and one that our friend Tanner had met, had managed to sidestep, is... is um skills being being always tied to one attribute and the problem that can happen with that is it can bottleneck the kind of spreads you're going to see yeah or make cer or make certain classes need to have certain skills just mm -hmm. in just in order to be viable and of course, we've talked we've talked about and we've bitched about certain skills being over useful. Yeah. Which, if you want to have the if you want to have those high priority skills, that's fine. But don't proclaim that you can do just about any kind of character when you do that. 
Unless you're trying to piss me off. <laughs> Any anyway, the following lists spent the benefits each skill point confers. This is the same for every level. The unique skill effect gained at level 7 can be found with the corresponding skill in the skills list. So these are these so these are the effects. At one skill point, add a plus one to the die. At two, plus one bonus die on checks. At three, reroll one failed check per round. At four, add plus two to a die or plus one to two dice one per round once per round. At five, plus two bonus dice on checks instead of plus one. At six, reduce non attack difficulties by one level. At seven, unique effect. Nice. And then we have the skill list proper with the with a key for what ver for what virtue is going to be used. Mm hmm So we start with analysis, which is all about the fine details. Yep. So it uses mentality as its virtue. It's mm -hmm. only virtue, I might add. Yep. With one point in analysis, you gain proficiency in science kits. At seven SP, you get an auto hit die when performing this check and X information when using this skill. So at 7 SP, it basically makes it easier to succeed, and when you do succeed, you get more stuff. Mm -hmm. So next is one Next is one of the big ones, um, Arcanting, which can use either Mentality, Judgment, or Power. And none of these are um, secondary virtues. These are all primary virtues based on what Arcanting class you're using. Mm-hmm. You gain the expertise Deep Connection, which we'll get which we'll get into later. If you are not an Arcanting unit, you may learn plus three novice spells and plus one mystic spell once a point is invested, and gain an additional plus two spells every fifth level. If you if you are not trained in Arcanting and attempt to use the power virtue, you roll with two auto mist die. After five points are earned slash invested, you may cast a spell for free once per short rest. At seven SP, during a short rest of at least four hours, you may fully recharge one realm charge state of choice. Gain plus one bonus level in programming. After a successful cast action, you may cast a novice spell as an extra action. This may not be an area or channeled spell. This makes some of the casting classes that we've talked about even more ridiculous. Yep, because the casting classes get our canting automatically. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the really funny thing here is just the sheer amount of spells and utility you're already getting just from having our canting as an as a skill alone. Gish characters are going to, are not going to feel like you sacrificed something to get something else. No. Like we said earlier, gishing in Veil of the Void is stupid easy. As is evidenced by the fact that you can just throw one skill point into Arcanting on, say, your combat medic, and all of a sudden you've got access to spells. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to note that you heard plus three novice spells and plus one mystic spell. Mystic spell list uh, is it's specifically has to be accounted for hmm. and then the plus three novice spells are going to be in any tree any tree but nat natura because natura requires for you to be a naturalist mm -hmm. and you know how we talked about how um how how the last the last class that we did that we handled can cheat the system regarding charge state yep the that was thalmatech. Just, yeah the thalmatech that was just with its normal features now we look at the Thaumatech through this light, and it can, and it's even, it can, it even has more ridiculous amounts of cheat the system. Especially if you dump SP into Arcanting automatically. Mm -hmm. um, you're just like, I want my Arcanting to be as awesome as possible. First of all, so that you know your Arcanting rolls are good, and then second of all. So that you can get all the extra goodies that come with our canting as a skill. Yeah. Get rid of recharge one, uh, uh, recharge an entire realm charge state of choice in four hours. Yes, please. 
I'd like you to do a bit of math for me. Mm -hmm. Given given what we did with the with the um, Thaumatec that time, mm -hmm. I want you. I'd like you to calculate how many how many spells a level twenty Thaumatec would could potentially get if they with um seven levels of our canting. So give me a second here. Uh, I'm just gotta go back down to the Thaumatech real quick and look at that. So Thaumatech off the bat gets six novice spells and three mystic spells at level one. Mm -hmm. Um, and then one spell every other level so at that point that's 19 spells mm -hmm. off the bat didn't they get some weren't there some additional ones just from features yeah um from the spell upgrade features mm -hmm. you got two additional spells at spell upgrade at level five spell upgrade at level 10 and spell upgrade at level 15 mm -hmm. uh and then it 20 uh you didn't just get you know you, you didn't get more spells because you got access to spell superlative spells because you did got to spell mastery but you did get your ultimate which allowed you to cast two spells of magus level or below for free once per 24 hour period mm -hmm. which is nice um so just from the Thaumatech alone, without looking at any of the specialization additionals, anything like that, um, you are getting 24-ish spells. Okay. Now let's say that the, this hypothetical Thaumatech has an Arcanting of 7. Okay. So they get another 3 novice spells and a, and a mystic spell um, just from level 1. And then they get 2 more additional spells at every 5th level. So... Four, four spells at the very beginning of their journey just by putting one point into our canting. So now we're at 28 spells. Actually, no, hold on. It would have been 25 because it was 6 plus 19. So now we're at 29 spells. Excuse me. And then at 5th level, 10th level, 15th level, and 20th level, you're getting another 2, so that's another 8. So 37 in a row? <laughs> Thirty, the they get thirty-seven spells. If they if they dump everything into, I mean, I don't think you even need to dump more than one point into our canting, because you get those three novice and and one mystic spell once a point is invested. So you could okay. invest this at, at level four, mm -hmm. and then at every fifth level you get another two. Yeah. So you don't you don't have you can just put, you can just dip a little bit of it and you'll be fine, or you can dip a whole lot more and do more stuff. The more our, the more points you put into our canting, the be the obviously the better your rolls are going to be. But there's other things that allow you to get more caster out of your caster. Mm -hmm. I want to. You really want? Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say you could be the castiest caster that ever did cast. The reason why I went with the Thaumatech in this instance is I wanted to see how far this could go, and that's the biggest caster of the of the whole bunch. Mm hmm Because you have that many, and that's not including all the all the shit you're going to be doing with the USB. Yep, all the extra stuff you can get, and especially depending on what specialization you take. Mm hmm Anyway, next is balance, which is a finesse skill. This skill represents your ability to maintain your footing in shaky situations, animal riding, acrobatics, etc. After three SP are invested slash earned, you may use a reaction to perform a contested balance check to avoid a melee attack. Reaction dodge. Nice. Mm -hmm. At seven SP, you gain plus three bonus dice when, attempted to when attempting to balance instead of plus two. Twice per short rest, you may automatically pass a balance check of hard four or less. Well, that's nice. 
I'm just gonna use my auto my auto pass. You have seven in balance. Yeah. You told us we were train robbers. Mm -hmm. So next is covert, which is also finesse. This skill Hello. represents your ability to conceal yourself, to blend into your surroundings. The only um, people who could get away with covert being uh, power would be House Steiner. Yeah, yeah, we've we've made the joke about Operation Ninja. Hmm. Now with 100% less bees in your cockpit. <laughs> and just remember, there is the right way to stealth, there is the wrong way to stealth, and then there is the Steiner way, which is just the wrong way with more atlases. Well, after all, if everybody's dead, no one witnessed you. Mm -hmm. At, se at um, 7 SP... You cannot be revealed unless a sensor of very rare level is used, an overwhelming or higher adversary spots you, or you reveal yourself. When you succeed in attacking from stealth, you automatically inflict a critical hit. Hmm. This is that moment where you're like, why do I hear boss music and it's a stealth archer from Skyrim? <laughs> either either the... Who was it that had? Who was it that had the great bow in Dark Souls? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, but you know which great bow I'm talking about—the one that it was specifically designed to hunt dragons. Mm-hmm. He he was a giant. Mm-hmm. There's also those big. There's also those big ass bows in Monster Hunter, but every weapon is a big ass weapon in Monster Hunter. Yep. I know, I know someone might say, even the Twin Blades? Yes, even the Twin the, Blades. The Twin Blades are the size of long swords, and they're intended to be he as wielded as daggers. Your argument is invalid. Mm -hmm. So then we have crafting, which is primarily a mentality, but it can, it can use judgment, power, or vitality. This represents your ability to build or forge items. This check can be used for building anything. At 7 SP, gain plus 1 bonus die on crafting checks, and you can craft non-extraordinary legendary artifacts. Um, judgment, I can see how you could use that. Power, oh, you need you need a lot of strength when you're when you're operating hammer and anvil. Um, vitality. How else do you <laughs> stand in front of the forge for hours on end, monk? Yeah. But be, but beyond that, but beyond that, I can see why this would, I can see why the whole secondary virtue thing is a explanation based approach. Yeah, you need to justify your use of a secondary secondary virtue there because otherwise, uh, I'm going to go no. Use your primary. Mm -hmm. So then we have defense. I like defense being a skill. This skill represents your ability to defend against incoming attacks. With two points invested, you may also use finesse or power to perform deflect reactions. When you have four points invested into defense, you gain an auto-hit die when deflecting. At 7 SP, gain an additional reaction to deflect with. If you successfully defend during your first deflect, you may use this additional reaction instead to perform an attack against your attacker, gain protection from physical damage. <laughs> so this is for this is for pe this is for people who want to be be um the aggressive tank. Interesting. Or or a t or even a speedy tank since you could use fin since you could use finesse for your defense. At a, at a point. Mm-hmm. Oh. I certainly approve of it, and I can see I can see someone doing the so so the sword or spear and big ass shield. Yes. Yes. Also known as the Greco Roman method. Remember to cover the man to your left. Mm-hmm. The next is dodge, which is which uses um, finesse. 
also known as the Piccolo School of Combat. <laughs> the skill represents Dodge. The skill represents your ability to avoid ranged attacks. With four points, adversaries that attack you at range roll with minus one bonus die. At seven SP, mastery of this skill leads to true control. You gain an additional dodge reaction. Upon a successful dodge, you may perform a ranged attack on the adversary who attacked you once per round. Nice. Mm -hmm. Now next is dual wielding, which is either power or finesse. This skill represents your ability to wield more than one weapon. With two points in this skill, remove all penalties of dual wielding. If you have a vitality for... Ver if you have a Vitality Virtue score of 7 or higher, you can dual-wield non-great two-handed weapons. <laughs> At 7 SP, your weapons are extensions of your body, dealing an additional plus half weapon damage. You may add pips to an additional attack once per round. So if your Vitality Virtue is at 7, and you're pumping dual-wielding, you can Power Stance! <laughs> yes, you can power stance, and it's not going to be as much of a stamina draw. Yup. Uh, so next is environmental survival, which you which uses vitality and mentality as its primary, and power and judgment as its secondary. Mm-hmm. So you have learned tricks to survive in dangerous places and can resist some hazardous materials. Three points invested reduces the sickly and drained conditions on you by or duration, sorry, on you by one round. At seven SP, you gain protection from normal environmental hazards and poisons. You are immune to the drained, poisoned, and sickly conditions. Hey monk, it's you. <laughs> well, ne next is flight, which is a finesse skill. This skill represents your agility during personal flight, whether magical or other means. You gain proficiency with the jetpack item. At 7 SP, rocket boots give an additional plus 2 squares of extra movement. Your fall damage is reduced by half. Your jetpacks last an additional 4 rounds, and you roll with plus 3 bonus dice instead of 2. Oh, hey look, there's something for, to strive for as a, uh, a field knight. Oh yeah. Next is Intimidation, which it which is either Power or Charm. This skill represents your ability to fill others with either fear or respect. At 7 SP, if a target NPC has a vitality rating of 5 or less, you automatically intimidate them. Gain plus 3 bonus dice instead of 2. Nice. Um... So intim I'd say intimidation I'd say the seven SP intimidation is the um tall person privilege. Well I certainly don't think you'd be a small person. Mm -hmm. ah. So next is insight, which is a judgment skill. This represents your ability to de to detect truth in others' speech and actions. It's sense motive. At 7 SP, you understand the subtle cues of body language. Upon a successful check, you gain deeper insight into the target's psyche. You also gain a natural intuition. With this ability, you can never be surprised and always know if someone has ill intents direct towards you. A lie detector and alert. Wow. Let's see, next is mechanics. This skill represents your ability to build and maintain marvels of engineering, such as mechs and engines. You may perform a hard check twice per long rest to heal a target mech or prototype by half of their missing HP. Repairing this way may only be done out of combat. With one point invested, gain proficiency with repair kits. At 7 SP, when repairing a vehicle or ship, you heal it fully within four hours. The building and repairing of mechs requires an hour less of work, minimum of 10 minutes, and plus 3 bonus die on tests instead of 2. 
something the architect or smuggler could use. Maybe even the Mechromancer. Possibly. Mm -hmm. And um, any, proto any prototype who takes just one point in this is going to be ahead of the game. Yeah. And heal themselves. Mm -hmm. Physician, heal thyself. Yep. So next is Medicament, which is a which is either Mentality or Vital. Mentality primary, Vitality secondary. Mm. This represents your ability to heal yourself or others. Gain proficiency with med kits. For a ded for a dedicated explanation of medicament and healing, go to page thirty. I, we already covered that, I think. Yeah, uh, um, I, I I can think of a justification for vitality virtue. I'm too stupid to catch a cold. <laughs> of course. Big vitality, small judgment. Mm -hmm. At seven SP, you channel Eloa's realm into your into your healing, which removes a target of all negative effects from battle. They are then healed for half of their missing HP, maybe used twice per long rest. I heard that right, right? That's a, that's a full status uh, recovery and half HP. Half of their missing HP. Yeah, that's why. I, that's why I said. Half HP instead of half max HP. Mm -hmm. I would have said half max HP if I meant half max HP. Yep. Yeah, you did hear that. Wow. No full restore, but it's close. Mm -hmm. So next is muscle, which can, which is either power or vitality. This represents your brawn and athletic power when performed. When performing skills such as climbing, jumping, swimming, lifting, punching, etc. You shine. With two invested SP, you gain the expertise Fisticuffs. At seven SP, you have mastered your body's muscular makeup. You perform checks with plus three bonus dice and gain plus 20% max HP and protection from physical damage. So you're telling me that Dudley has a plus seven in this. <laughs> Close counter! Yeah. You want to know what would be even worse? Um, he also has a plus seven in in defense. If you get, if you put if you have somebody who has points in are canting and muscle, you have Armstrong. You have Alex Mus Luis Armstrong. Muscle, muscle, Mookie, Mookie. Or you have the Muscle Wizard. Take your pick. A cast fist. <laughs> so next is ju observation, which is a judgment skill. This represents your character's general perception of the area around them. Your passive observation checks are hard with two points invested. At 7 SP, your eye scanner can see through two square thick walls, and your passive observation is tough 5. You may add plus 3 to a failed die instead of the normal plus 2, and cannot be surprised by traps. Nice. Oh. I like how it, how it turns your your observation uh, from a number of of how good you are at observing to a number of how difficult it is for things to escape your observation. Observation seems to be presented here as the anti stealth. It it, it sort of is the anti stealth. If I wanted to use a comparison to the world's most ubiquitous tabletop game, it's it's a better than pa than passive. Uh, what was the name again? Perception, passive yeah. perception. Which is saying something because I've I've made very clear I'm not the biggest fan of perception as a skill. In fact, for our project, we don't even use it. Yeah, but our project is also much more different than this. Than yeah. The big reason I'm not a fan of perception or the, or the like as a as a skill or um spot back in the old days is yeah. it's a little bit too it ends up getting overused. It gets gamed, and I think I think th and a lot of people look at it as you put points in it and you can see better, but that's not exactly how you would train your eyes. Not to mention to perceive things doesn't necessarily mean you're seeing them. Mm -hmm. 
But my, my point here is that with passive perception over there, uh, it's a number that is your minimum roll. It's mm -hmm. what you are rolling to see things. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, Veil of the Void, it's the difficulty things have to roll at in successes to avoid your notice. Mm -hmm. It's it, it, You are the dice check rather than you being the one doing the dice check when it's a passive. And that's that's perfect. Hmm. When you, If something is a passive check, you should it should not be against some sort of automatic minimum roll you have. It should be you are the dice check at that point. Yeah. Now next we have performance, which is either charm or mentality. This represents your ability to perform an act. Gigs will become more readily available. Successful performances grant a minimum 500 times skill level in credits. At 7, at 7 SP, you are a true star and everybody knows your name. You always earn a minimum of 8,000 credits for a successful performance. You are always able to find free room and board while in civilized places. May add an additional plus one pip. Huh. Well, here's your uh, here's your skill for Mickey. <laughs> oh. Times five hundred. Oops. So anytime before level seven, you could be making upwards of three thousand credits per yeah. minimum per, per gig. But at level seven, you're uh, <laughs> at level. You're making. If they you had jumped in. If they had just kept the 500 times level, you would have gotten 3,500. With the way it's written, 8,000. Damn. Yeah. That's enough. Cre that's enough credits to replace Vegeta's broken scanner. No, it's not, Monk. It's not over 9,000. 8,000 in Japanese, remember? But it's also not over 8,000. <laughs> Minimum. I know. I'm just saying. Super Saiyan. Super duper Saiyan. Anyway, next is piloting. <laughs> which primary is finesse. Or you can go with mentality or judgment as a secondary. I can actually see those those coming up pretty uh pretty regularly, actually. Mm -hmm. This represents your ability to pilot starships, vehicles, and mechs. With three points invested, all allies performing checks while you are piloting do so with an auto-hit die. So you're giving help to the gunners. And your comms officer and your sensors officer and your so and on and e so forth. Yeah, ECM, all that, all that good stuff. Um, at 7 SP, the ship is part of you and your reaction time. Add plus three squares of extra movement to your ship and your allies may re-roll a failed check every round. Jeez. I missed that gunnery... The, uh, the gunnery officer. I missed! Re-roll. Oh, I hit! Uh, although when I, when I saw the whole the ship is part of you, I'm like, wait, are, are, we, bring, are we bringing in those, rid those ridiculous-looking helmets from Mech Warrior? No, we're just bringing in Setsuna FCA and his Gundam 00. <laughs> I am Gundam. Or <sighs> e or even better, the mobile trace system. Gundam fight. Ready? Go. <laughs> so next is programming. Oh god, I'm getting code monkey flashbacks. 99 little bugs in the code 99 bugs in the code you take one down you patch it around 108 little bugs in the code yep so mentality skill obviously you're natural when it comes to programming reprogramming and hacking units investing one point grants you proficiency with hack programs at 7 SP, you gain plus 3 bonus dice on tests rather than 2. Once per round, when you critically fail a programming check, you do not set off alarms and may attempt the check again. At level 1, you're a script kitty, because it said you have proficiency with hack programs. Mm -hmm. 
And if nobody knows what a script kitty is, oh my sweet summer child, go look it up. <laughs> uh, let's just just remember the different the difference between a prog a pro a um, code that works and a code that doesn't is that the coder has no idea. Not to mention there are uh, there are ten types of people in this world: those who can read binary and those who can't. I always, I always give, I always give sandwiches to the coders at, in my office, because I know if one of them snaps there and comes into work with a shotgun, they're going to leave me alone. <laughs> uh, yep. So, yep. next is sleight of hand, which has finesse as a primary and mentality as a secondary. Interesting. You are a master of misdirection. A quick flick of the wrist, and their wallet is yours. Or they're dead, baby. <laughs> I know I know why mentality is there as the secondary. Um, more common than not, uh, sleight of hand isn't just done through the finesse of the hands. It's a lot of misdirection. So, mm -hmm. A few lockpicks and the doors are open. With one point invested, you are proficient with the use of lockpicks and trap kits. At 7 SP, if you fail a test, the target no longer detects that you were attempting to steal from them. If you fail to unlock an un a alarmed electrical door, the alarm does not go off and you may attempt again. So this is for this is especially for those people who break who break their pins and have to use backups. Mm -hmm. Oh. So next is speechcraft, which is e which is either charm or mentality for its primary. You are well versed in the art of persuasive speech, whether using lies or truth. Maybe used to contest insight checks. Nice. At seven SP, during rests of at least two hours, you may prepare a convincing item. This is up to you and the GM. They may be falsified documents or a small item that leads people to believe you are who you say you are. People are more openly trusting of you and will help if they can. Signet ring. That's my item, a signet ring. Yep. Let's see, next is tracking and hunting, which is a mentality check. Hunters abound throughout this universe, whether they seek monsters or bounty or others in between. Your ability to track your quarry is second to none. You can determine what type of being left tracks you inspect. At 7 SP, you can easily determine what you are tracking and gain additional knowledge from tracks alone. If you are bounty hunting a target, you gain an additional 5,000 credits when you turn them in for a reward. You roll with plus three bonus dice instead of two on tests. Sounds like this is a good skill to pump into for the bounty hunter path over on Soldier. Mm -hmm. And this is the only time I'm going to reference Mando. We can either bring you in warm or cold. And last is Weapons Master, which is either power or finesse. This skill represents your understanding of your weapons, both melee and ranged. You have learned to master the art of fighting. No, I haven't. That game still kicks my ass. Let's use a TAS, Monk. I feel dirty using TAS. Ugh... Anyway, at 7 SP, you may immediately become proficient in three melee or ranged weapons of your choice. All weapons you use, either melee or ranged, deal an additional half base damage. You gain an additional attack action, limited to five attacks in one round. Yep. I remembered Weapons Master is what you want to pick if you're going to keep dealing with single weapons. Mm-hmm. Skill points are granted at every even level, 2, 4, 6, etc. However, <clears throat> you also gain skill points through using that skill. All skills level up the same. Each level has a required number of successes next to it that are needed to reach that level. 
So, 1 SP, 10 successes or fails. 2, 15 successes or fail. 3, 20 successes. 4, 25. 5, 30. 6, 35. 7, 40. And I'd like to point out that you can't advance through fails from level 3 onward. Mm-hmm. You only can advance through successes. Well, or spending SP. Mm -hmm. you require... There's another way to, to really invest into that skill. Just keep using it. Yep. You require 10 successful or, or failed rolls to reach 1 SP investment from 0 SP. You, ne you need to... And that's going over the same thing that I mentioned. Yep. If you have 0 to 1 SP invested in a skill, you gain a successful roll regardless of the check's success. If you invest a bonus level point into a skill that you, have ar that you already have rolls in, you keep those rolls and continue to add them as you use the skill successfully. So in other words, the skill points that you get from leveling up are a um, speed-up process. Or a, wor or a workaround. Mm-hmm. So if you already if you already had um, if you're if you it do, I'd say that it doesn't make um, it doesn't make it easier. It's just it's just a way to circum to circumvent the system. You can go things the slow way or the fast way. Yeah. And you don't even well, need and you don't even need microtransactions. No, no microtrans. Mm -hmm. Good game. 10 out of 10 would play again. If you invest the... I already, I already mentioned that. Then it gives an example. You have 15 successful rolls in Medicament, which has 3 SP invested. You then gain an additional skill point from reaching player level 2 and invest it into Medicament, raising the skill level to 4 points. Now the skill would be level 4 with 15 successful rolls. You would now need 15 more rolls to reach level 5. It doesn't bypass the the basic success requirement for any level. It just extends them out. It's like um. I guess if I had to use a contemporary example, it's like extending the max HP in a life bar without getting base HP with it. You still got to restore restore all that base HP. Mm-hmm. Oh. But when it comes to bonus levels or SP, you can only inv that caps at six. The seventh, the final level, you have to earn that. Which means that if you're, if you're using SP to push it, you still have to get forty successful rolls to get to level seven. Mm -hmm. Then automatically succeeded, which. Certain ability spells and expertise allow you to auto succeed. When this happens, add one successful roll to the skill the check uses. Spells or abilities with no difficulty are not included in this. So even your even your auto wins still end up pushing things forward. Yep. And the next. F the next few pages covers abilities that we've already seen in the skill list. Yeah, it just talks about the additional uses that may come up during uh, auto successes. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these we covered when we did... I think all of these we covered when we did the um, skill list. I don't see anything that we that we didn't already cover. Mm -hmm. And I although I there is one exception and that is medicament. We didn't cover medicament. That was my bad. Um, without points invested in this, without points invested in this skill, you can heal allies outside of combat once using a med kit <clears throat> on a tough five medicament check. Successful checks heal the target for five plus mentality. Investing one point gives you proficiency with med kits and allows you to heal targets on an average three difficulty outside combat. 
Five points allows you to heal in combat. You can only do this once per target per combat. And, and for combat medics, of course, it's usable as an attack. Or, or in other words, loads healing shotgun. I will heal the shit out of you! Mm hmm. Oh. I'd say in that regard, I, I know we. This is the reason why I kept bringing up 2 Fort during those early days with the classes. Mm hmm. Oh. But then we get to expertise. Expertise are feats. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're our feat system. Mm -hmm. Except they don't suck. Yeah. And none of them is is necessary for play. No. They're, they're goodies. They are not mm -hmm. required. And you're, you're getting five of them right out of the gate. So that solves that problem that I've had with feats in, in other games. Yep. And you are getting you're you're going to be you're going to be getting development in skills or feats every other level. Actually skills and feats every other level. So you're going to have plenty of stuff to pick from. Yep. But the reason they list it as points, well, you'll see in a minute. And this is where this is where the bigger amount is going to come in. So Fields of expertise, and I should I should note that they describe expertise as representing passive potential and understanding. Oh, and you can and you can gain additional expertise through your actions, which we'll likely get into later. So first, ace pilot. When performing piloting checks, you gain an auto hit die. Mm -hmm. Then ageless. You now you no longer age up to the maximum of four. Th oh, you no longer age up to the maximum of four thousand years. Here we are, the princes of the universe. Oh, next is alternate appearance. This is a unique one that costs two points. You can transform your appearance into another form. Perhaps you were granted the shapeshift ability by Elanath or Change, or maybe your link to the arcane current is strong enough to allow you to manipulate the aura around you. Either way, you may cast the spell Conceal Oneself at will as a free spell. However, when cast this way, you are only able to switch to your alternate appearance. This spell has no duration and lasts until cancelled or dispelled. So, which certainly fits. Yep. So next is appraisal. You can instantly tell the price of a non-legendary artifact. You may perform an analysis check to examine an item and gain specific information based on the roll. These could be things such as if the item were real or fake, if it is historic, could be could it be useful for other items, etc. Uh, next is arcane. You can see the arcane as it flows into this into the central realm. You may have grown up around it, felt it strong in your whole life, or had some incident that encouraged it. You may cast a non-area of effect, non-channeled novice or apprentice spell based on current casting level as a reactionary strike. You gain one spell from the mystic spell tree. <laughs> So that so add that to our Thalmatech from earlier and that's now we're at thirty eight. <laughs> yeah. Um Art Artifact Hunter is next, which is two points. You automatically know a legendary artifact's price and if it is cursed. Once per long rest you may attune or unattune yourself or another or another from a legendary artifact. Okay, nice. Nice. Next is Awareness, which is two points. You have quite the discernment for people in situations. Add plus one pip to your initiative rolls and plus one auto hit die on insight and observation checks. <laughs> it's 
Let's see. Next is battle. You may perform a contested analysis dodge check once per round to avoid a reactionary strike from a single adversary you understand or to learn a specific weak point they may have, if they have any. Upon choosing this field, choose three of the below adversaries to know. So we have AI, Alien, Chaotic, Cursed, Darkling, Demonic, Dragon, Ethereal, Humanoid, and Mech. And Mechronics and Undead and mm. a few others. Yeah. Mecha, Mecha Lates, Mechronics, and Undead. The GM may allow you to use any other adversary tag that is within the game. Um, I'm wondering if the, I'm wondering if battle is something you can pick multiple times to get more um, types. That'd be a nice clarification. Mm -hmm. So next is Blade Master. When deflecting or attacking with a proficient blade, you always win ties. Nice. Mm -hmm. While you were spending time with your friends, I was perfecting my way of the blade. Uh, next is Bloodcaster, which is a two-point expertise. Choose three spells from any non-unique tree. These, these become your starting known spells. During a short or long rest, you may inscribe two or four non-area field spells into, onto your arms. As an extra action, you may inflict 10% max HP in pure damage to yourself and cast one of the spells you inscribed on your arms. The highest level you can inscribe on your arm is Adept level, and you cannot inscribe more than your Vitality Virtue in spells. <laughs> so here's your cast from HP, guys. It's a very limited cast from HP. Mm-hmm. A, a clarification I'd like to know is if you're casting from HP, since you're using your life force to do it, do the arcane current uh, charge states actually matter here, or no? I can see why you'd ask that because, other, because other otherwise, um, if somebody if somebody already has casting abilities, then. They they might not be as inclined to pick Bloodcaster. Yeah, well, and on top of that, the the way it mechanically says it works, you spend ten percent max HP to cast one of the spells you've essentially etched onto your own body. Well, the one of the questions I'd have to ask is: Is this an auto cast, or are you rolling for it? Yeah. Because if it's an auto cast, then I can understand the price paid. Mm -hmm. I'd say that's something that needs cl that needs clarification. Yep, we got some questions. Mm -hmm. A little bit of more clarification on the minutiae of Bloodcaster would be nice. Yeah. So next is Born Star. From acting to singing, you are a natural talent. You are now paid an additional five hundred credits for successful performances. When performing in front of an audience, you roll with an additional plus one bonus die. Get this in level seven performer, and all of a sudden you're making 8,500 credits with extra dice galore. Mm -hmm. So next is business owner. Two points, a un unique. You've owned your own business before your adventures. Example, tavern, smithy, used ship store. You start the game with a small business and a business license. Next is communications. You understand and learn languages far better than others. When attempting to study or learn a new language, roll with an auto-hit die on the required check. While speaking using a language you choose with communications, you re you reroll a one result. Upon taking this expertise, you automatically learn two of the following unique languages: Celeste, Chaotum, Dema, Divinal, Dracon, Orda, Rera, or Silda, or any non-unique language. So next is Deep Connection. You are connected to the Arcane Current. I think this is the one that we saw that you get automatically from our canting. Mm -hmm. Gain plus one bonus die when resisting spells. Being directly connected to the Arcane Current also means you are conductor for magic. 
The arcane current flows th freely through you, potentially leading you to some dangerous situations with unstable legendary items or magic. One S and of course it says one SP invested in our canting grants this expertise automatically. Yep, which means that even casters who usually have our canting as a basic skill um, that would then get this expertise and would then also have some interesting things to uh, contend with. Mm -hmm. Next is demonic discernment. You have come too close to the powers of demons before and have felt their madness. You can detect demons around you within a 10-square radius. You may perform an analysis observation check to determine what sort of demon or demonic effect is in play. When performing this check, add plus one auto-hit die. You also gain immunity to madness. Useful. Mm -hmm. Considering how madness messes with your, your way to act. Yeah. Next is Divine Workings. You have seen Eloah's great power. Through the great book and listening to his words, you have begun to see the small threads of his plan. You can discern between true divinals and the fallen. You may besiege him once per day and heal an ally up to half HP. You may also reveal a demon once per day. If you do, reveal it to members of your party and inflict 25 damage to the, to the demon. Cast the out demon! <laughs> I am now imagining a field knight wearing a uh, a priest's black with the white collar. Mm -hmm. He has a rocket launcher and a machine gun. <laughs> I'm just imagining the priest from Dead Alive. His rocket launcher and machine gun are shaped like a cross, monk. <laughs> Next is Ether Workings. Whether through the study of old manuscripts, a birth connection, or some other strange force, you have experienced Death's Realm of Endscape. You gain additional plus one bonus die when learning or hunting things from this realm. Ether creatures can no longer avoid your reactionary strikes. You gain resistance to Ether damage. This would be great to give to a, ne a Mechromancer. I thought the Mechromancer got it automatically. Hold on. Yeah, double check if they get it if they get it by default. If they do, me, makes perfect sense. Let me check. Where are you? Mechromancer. Mechromancer. Uh Mercanting. Soldvar. Nope, nope. But yeah, you could give it to... Uh, wait, hold on. It, it, it's... Um, it's one of the starting items you can pick. Occult or Aether Workings. Mm -hmm. So, one of the starting expertise you can, cho you can choose. Fair enough. Next is Eyes of Shadow. When in pure darkness, you see as if in dim light. Dark vision. Um, next is Fateless One. You are no longer connected directly to the strands of destiny. This makes you immune to spells such as See the Connection. Hmm. I wonder if that's a... Uh... If that's a um, carryover from something else, because see the connection only leads to this page. Yeah, that might be an artifact. But I th but the whole idea is people who do divination shit can't see you. Mm -hmm. So next is fisticuffs, which is a two point one. I think. I think see the connection. was um yeah see the connection has been renamed to a mystic spell called see the fate strings mm -hmm. so 
A little bit of an artifact, carryover artifact. Mm -hmm. Okay, so fisticuffs, two points. Yep. When you critically strike with your fists or fist weapon, you inflict the max plus six damage and may add plus one to the critical table. I feel attacked. You should. <laughs> uh, I'd probably, I'd probably house rule that th that you use th that this can be used just as much with kicking as it can with fists. Mm -hmm. uh, so next is Forge Smith. Crafted items have an additional effect or use, increased value, and you gain an auto hit die on crafting checks. So this is your dwarven expertise. Just our dwarves are different. Mm -hmm. They're tall, blue, and have four arms. Yep. So next is Galactic Law. There are many laws by which the galaxy ru runs, and you know many of these rules. While in common society, you know what rules to follow and what your rights are and fit in with the court system. You may add oh, hey. two pips to a die when using the law to prove a point. It's the lawyer feat. It's a feat perfect for smugglers. Mm-hmm. I was I was not I was not smuggling accord, according to according to according to article 35B sub, subsection A.5 it specifically states that this is legal in this region. Now get the mm -hmm. hell off of my ship. Mhm. Mm so next is galactic politics. You are a master politician, you are highly respected and are automatically accepted at most political gatherings. When recalling knowledge about your species' political f information, you may add an auto-hit die. This is madness. This is politics. Next is a guild member. You are a member of one of the many guilds throughout Reactin. Regardless of where you rank, you receive plus one bonus die on speechcraft, intimidation, and insight checks when discussing with other members. You can find a member of the guild in any major town. Nice. And that's the guild. That's something that's good for any kind of profession. Yep. So next is Hacker. You know your way around nearly all firewalls and programs. Whenever performing programming checks to break into something or gain control of another, roll with a plus one auto hit die. So this is basically advantage to combat combat programming, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yep. Next is a unique one called Half Bloodline. It is basically is basically for those who want to do the half-breed thing. The special snowflake feat. You can, The only things you can't be a half-blood of is Celestia and Exiled. For fairly obvious reasons, I'd say. I would think so. When taking a half bloodline character, you choose your main species for the purposes of ancestral bloodline, and then your subspecies. You take the ancestral bloodline from the main and either take traits from each species or take one full trait line from one species. That's so how you can grab bag traits. Mm hmm. It's nice. So, next is Historian. You have studied the vast history of many different species. Choose three species, and when performing a knowledge recollection check checks on them, roll with plus one bonus die and an auto hit die. I think this is another one of those of should you be able to take this multiple times? Mm -hmm. Just getting just getting three or le or or something like that um, species, because obviously there's a lot of species in the galaxy. Yeah, but knowing the main ones is probably the basics. Mm -hmm. Next is Inquisitor Disciple. Oh boy. You are, dis you are a disciple of the old art of the Inquisitors, those proficient in hunting rogue mages. Roll with plus one bonus die when attempting to resist or dodge spells. Once every three rounds when a spell is cast adjacent to you, you may perform a reactionary strike against them. Ordo Malleus, is that you? Burn the Xenos! The witch! The heretic! 
Uh, next is Insightful. You're good at reading people. You gain plus one bonus die and insight checks. Next is Instrumentalist. You are a born musician with a natural ear for music. You learn any song after hearing it and only hearing it only once and can easily harmonize with other musicians. You gain immediate proficiency with three musical instruments of your choice and gain proficiency with musical instruments after paying f after playing five full songs instead of ten. Huh. Oh, so this is for those who want to bard it up. Yeah, but bards can actually be useful. So, mm -hmm. um, Money. Why are you looking at Mickey? I'm not looking at Mickey. <laughs> I said, I said bards can be useful. Mickey's an author. She is also useful. No, I'm, I'm referring to this being something you'd probably try and talk her into picking. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no. No, if I was going to give Mickey a class in, in Veil of the Void... I'd want it to be something fun, but also something completely outside her play style. Field Knight. Necromancer. <laughs> That'll... Or Architect. Architect could work. Mm -hmm. oh. Next is Intergalactic Drive Operation. You understand the <laughs> dynamic of basic warp and jump drives. As such, when activating a warp or jump from a ship, you may add plus one auto-hit die to your check. Your jumps take one less round to perform. This does not stack. So if you've got other bonuses that reduce jump times, mm -hmm. this won't stack with them. Yep. So next is leadership. When assisting a group check, you may allow a single player to turn a one or two result to a five result. During, <laughs> during combat, you may grant one player plus one pip to spend on checks once per round. Jesus. That's, um... That's some effective group play for, uh, formation there. Mm -hmm. Let's see, next is Like the Mountain. You refuse to be forcefully moved. You gain plus one auto hit die on muscle checks when attempting to resist forceful movement. Let's see, net. Why am I suddenly imagining. The gym scene from Lisa the Painful. <laughs> oh. Next is lip reading. You can effortlessly read the lips of other individuals. Unless the being is hiding their mouth beyond your view distance or speaking a language you do not know, you can read and understand what they are saying. I kind of wonder how many chances you would get to use that one. Especially since cer um, certain races that we've covered in this series don't have mouths. The Celestia. Mm-hmm. The Celestia don't have mouths. They just have a swirling galaxy for a face. Or something out of Pink Floyd. <laughs> or, or David Bowie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so next is Living Clock. You are always able to determine, determine what time of day it is along with the day of the week, month, year, and cycle. I'd imagine that would be very useful to have when you're out in deep space. Or accidentally entered another realm. Mm -hmm. Especially especially if you're especially if you're fucking around with a mimic. <laughs> and get thrown into the realm of change where the bit where the best way to tell the time is there isn't one. Mm -hmm. uh, so next is lucky or unlucky. This special expertise is more of a role-playing expertise, though it can affect dice rolls on occasion. You're either naturally lucky or unlucky. Things tend to work out or not work out for you. When you are lucky, events happen to you favorably. When you are unlucky, events t often take a turn for the worst. With this ability, the GM decides what happens and when it happens. I mean, 
This is for people who are too lazy to actually role play. In my brain. Or who don't want bad things to happen to them, and so they take it for the lucky part. Yeah, except it's up to the GM, so I know. Make sure to make sure to buy the GM a sandwich. Or, you know, read your expertises more carefully before you put your fate into his hands. Mm -hmm. So next is Master Thief. Lupin the third, is that you? Or what about Garrett? <laughs> Not enough okay. sewers? Not dignifying that. I do not want to think about the Thieves Guild again. Oh, you just did. Fuck. <laughs> a true master of the craft of thievery. When performing sleight of hand checks use, using lock picks and hack programs, roll with plus one bonus die. Each lock pick now has two uses instead of one and no longer breaks if you critically fail with it. Ooh. So next is mechs. You understand the inner workings of mechs and techno-transferred prototypes. While working on repairing and building units, you may reduce the time it takes by 30 minutes, minimum of 5 minutes. You gain plus 1 bonus dice on piloting and balance checks while handling vehicles or mech-based creatures. Didn't the mech, didn't the skill, didn't the, um, didn't we go through, didn't we go through a skill earlier that reduced the, that reduced the time at higher levels as well? I think so. It was um just before medicament, but uh, not but that was mechanics. Yeah, but that was that was for he that was for healing. Mm -hmm. Um, at seven oh yeah, at seven SP building and repairing me mechs and the like had an hour less of work to a minimum of ten minutes, so you can drop 90 minutes with it, with the combination of the two. And because it's a combination of the two, this one says to a minimum of five minutes. Mm. So you apply the first one to take your two hours down to one hour, and then you apply this one to take it down to 30 minutes. Mm. Or, if it's already an hour and 30 minutes, you use the first one to take down an hour, and use this one to take it down to five minutes remaining. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Then we have Never Lost. You never get lost in towns. While you may not know exactly where you're going, you tend to end up where you need to be. Not all who wander are lost. It's just... It, it, it's just Ryoga. That's all it is. It's Ryoga. <laughs> he may not know where he is, but he always ends up where he needs to be. Let's see, next is Nimble. You are incredibly light on your feet, someone capable of showing both grace and agility while, when walking. When performing balance checks, roll with plus one bonus die. And given that you can use balance at high, at high levels to perform dodges easily, that's going to be useful. Indeed. Mm -hmm. So next is noble. People in other upper class society know of you and or your family heritage. While you maintain noble presentation, you always find premium lodging with nobles or in high class taverns. You're generally accepted at noble gatherings. You also gain a family lineage crest to prove who you are. Uh. <laughs> so next is a cult. So this is the other one that uh, a necromancer could pick at character at level one. Mm -hmm. You have learned much about the occult through studies and observation. When you come across something of the occult, you automatically recognize common symbols and practices. When you perform any skill checks related to the occult, you may add plus one pip on an additional die, maximum of three dice. Nice. Mm -hmm. Next is one of the gang. You are a member of one of the four main criminal organizations. The Blue Scarab Rangers, the Enigma Consortium, the Lunatic Courts, or the Warp Lit Syndicate. You know the secret signals, signs, and languages used by your chosen group. You can always find their locations in towns as well. So, which one of these do you want to be, Monk? Probably not the Lunatic Courts. You don't want to... You, you, you don't want a Wabbitjack? No. <laughs> you don't. 
Uh, the only Daedric prince worth knowing. Oh. Uh, Shiagorath. Probably whichever one lets me lets me walk around in a suit. That's likely going to be at least three of them. Mm -hmm. Different types of suit. The syndicate would probably make you make you. They sound like they'd be in suits. I mean, they're a syndicate. Mm -hmm. Like high level triads or high level yakuza. So next is prodigy. You have been a prodigy in your craft since a young age. When you choose this expertise. You learn one of four choices at half the ba at half the base sessions normally needed: armor, weapons, tools, or spells. You may choose skills as well. If you do, choose a virtue. All non-attack skills that use that virtue take five fewer rolls to level. You may take this expertise once. So there's your answer about taking multiple expertise. Yeah, I think that I should have been made clear earlier on. Y yeah. There should be a, there should be a like a, a single sentence at the beginning of expertises. All expertises may be taken multiple times unless otherwise noted, or unless the effect is only necessary once, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So next is ranged specialist. While not locked in combat with a ranged weapon, you may reroll a single one result on up to two attacks. While locked in combat, you may use your ranged weapon to deflect. Basically, you're stopping their sword with your rifle. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that they added the latter one because it means that even cl it means that even close range shooters will get some use. Yep. So, in other words, you want you want gun kata? Take this. <clears throat> gun, gun, gun. Hold on, hold on. Jukundo, excuse me. Mm -hmm. So next is Ranger Sense. Choose one of the following locations. Cities, space, space stations, or nature. While in the chosen location, you gain plus two squares of basic movement, plus one bonus level in balance and flight, and plus one auto hit die on checks used to detect traps. This is favorite environment, except it doesn't suck. Yeah, because it's a very broad location type. Mm-hmm. So next is realms. You study and understand the realms of existence. When you choose this study, you may choose two realms from the ten realms to learn. These ten are order, chaos, reflection, shadow, arcane, presence, enscape, everchange, and adareth. When a subject comes up regarding the realm of your choice, you show great knowledge. While performing checks for realms or against adversaries of the chosen realm, you gain an additional plus one bonus die. Gain resistance to the chosen realm's damage. That's going to be useful for all of the casters. <clears throat> you know what I would design, Monk? What? A completely non-caster soldier who takes Inquisitor Disciple and Realms Reflection and does nothing but hunt down mimics. <laughs> See, next is Religious Recollection. Those with this expertise have, cho have spent quite some time studying the religious texts of old. Roll with plus two bonus dice when performing at Knowledge Recollection checks related to various religions. I do You'd like know Latin here. Yep. I like that they made it nonspecific. You'll still know Latin mm -hmm. and Sanskrit. Probably Aramaic, too. Indy. So, next is Resurrected. You've more than brushed with death. <clears throat> You've visited it. Through your visit, left you def your visit left you deformed. Ergo, bright glowing green eyes, ether crystals sprouting from your arms, an eerie glow following you, etc. You are, never you are nevertheless whole. Gain an additional three negative HP before dying. This has stained your soul, and you can no longer be resurrected. So there there you go. You can only get one extra life in this game, and only sparingly. Mm -hmm. So next <coughs> is Shieldmaster. 
While wearing a shield, gain plus one bonus level in defense. Gain an additional plus one... Not, not plus one. Plus 10% damage resistance from the shield. While wielding a shield and no weapons, you may perform attacks using the shield itself. This attack deals 1d6 damage on level 1 and deals an additional 1d6 damage on level 5. Its damage type is based on the shield type. Hypercharging Star! <laughs> so the next is Shorthand, which is 2 points. When casting a channeled spell that takes more than 1 round, reduce the number by 1. <laughs> quick cast. That's all it is. It's quick cast. Mm -hmm. Except useful. Yep. So next is <clears throat> Spellblade. You can choose one novice or mystic non-area field spell per day to inscribe on your melee weapon. After making a successful attack, you may cast the spell automatically. This raises the charge state. Your spell may be used three times per day. At level five, you can choose an apprentice spell. I'd say this is even more for those people who want to gish. Yep. This one also specifies that it raises the charge state. I'd still want to know if blood if the blood magic raises charge state. Mm -hmm. So that next, clarification be nice. Next is spell resistance. Choose two of the magic types: air, earth, ether, fire, natura, reflection, water or any the GM allows, and gain a minor resistance to those spells, allowing you to take 10% less damage from spells in that tree. Nice. So next is Stealth Drive. You can hide a ship and even make it completely vanish. When activating Stealth Drives, you gain an auto-hit die and adversaries roll with minus one bonus die when searching for your ship. I'd say that'd be really good for smugglers and pirates. Uh -huh. Let's see, So next is Strong Memory. You gain plus one auto-hit die when performing knowledge recollection checks. Next is Student, which is a unique two-pointer. You are or were recently a student. As such, you have access to your college or campus. You also have contacts from said campus. You gain plus two additional skill points to distribute. Oh, well, there's your skill monkey feet. Yep. Next is super sensory, which is also two points. You are a being and of super sensory abilities. Oh, and it's a unique. Work closely with your GM to create some sort of simple but special super sensory strength. Examples given are ability to sense those with super sensory gifts. In a small range, ability to see slightly into the future, telepathy, etc. Essentially, you get yourself to be a minor X-Man. Mm -hmm. Next is Tavern Talk. You have always had a knack for talking with those in taverns and bars. People will more openly talk with you while within a tavern or bar, often revealing secrets. And you may fully re-roll a critically failed roll once per short rest while inside a tavern. Hmm. See, next is Tech Expert. Through extensive studying, you've learned much about the technology of our time. While attempting to operate modern technology you are not familiar with, you roll with plus one bonus die on the knowledge, programming, or mechanics check. Standard fare. Next is Thrifty. You have never been one to settle for a set price. When you are buying an item for a vendor, and are bartering for a lower price, you may roll with two auto-hit dice. <laughs> so, that's for your hagglers. So Throw that on your face. Mm -hmm. Next is Virtuous. You choose three virtues. Whenever Wait, you prefer... Oh. You skipped vehicle weapons. Oh, vehicle weapons, sorry. Vehicle weapons. Adversary starships and vehicles do not last long against you in a dogfight. When attacking with a vehicle's weapon, you deal an additional plus vehicle's power in damage and gain an additional plus one bonus die on the attacks. Nice. Oh. So next is Virtuous, which is two points. You choose three virtues. 
Whenever you perform contested checks with the chosen virtues, gain plus one bonus die, and you may add plus one pip to a die. May only be taken once. Obviously, otherwise that might be a little too useful. <laughs> and lastly is war canting. Through years of training, you have come to understand how to cast spells even with multiple weapons equipped. You can now dual wield and cast spells. You may use your Arcanting skill to perform the Deflect reaction against an incoming melee attack. Which we covered that one in the past when we were going over the skills, but it's good to refresh the memory on that front. Mm -hmm. And obviously, next week we'll be covering the Arcane rules and the Mystic sp and the um, Mystic spell tree. Some of it will be stuff we've gone over, and some of it will be some new stuff. But I think we should get... When it comes to skills, I think something that I appreciate with the way skill use happens here is that it's not exactly the um, attribute-skill-dipole relationship you often see in these kind of games. Mm. No, instead is, it's, instead, investing points in a skill isn't going to just, it'll add more dice, but not, at, but not as its default effect. Yep, does other things instead. Mm-hmm. You have the you have its ability to add more dice, and and mess around with dice when you use it. But the die pool generation itself is still largely rooted in your virtue. Yep, and it's still at that that uh, ultimate um, limit of sixteen positive dice. This also means that you're not that um you're not as penalized for using skills that you don't have as many points in. Because that's another problem with that with that particular dynamic that can crop up. Mm -hmm. Wherein somebody wherein somebody somebody um when they're really when they've invested points in one skill, they're a little less inclined to invest points in a new skill because they're not going to be as good as other skills with other skills that they may have. Yeah. Whereas here, you know, investing in just one, investing just one point into a lot of the skills is enough to get you some really nice uh, additionals. Mm -hmm. I remember Pathfinder trying to um, address this by giving by giving you I th I think the first skill point that you got um, gave you a, gave you a plus gave you a plus two modifier as well. But after mm. that, it was just one for one, which is cute and all, but it's a bandage. Mm -hmm. Especially when skill point distribution is going to be randomized, which I never did. Unless, uh, um, well, I never did. I never did when I'm GMing. Yeah, I had the same rule when it came to hit points. Instead, I'd rather maximize the die. And I know, I know, a certain game decided to go with the average of the die. No, maximize it. You're going to be giving people a shitload of hit points, anyways, and the yep. whole hit and the whole hit die thing. Yep. Which is still a case of missing the point, but I digress. Now, when it comes to the expertise, I do like that a lot of them do not require chaining. I do think that some clarification needs to be done regarding expertise that could be taken multiple times. Yeah, yeah. We saw two in there that specifically said you can only take them once. Mm -hmm. But we need to know what other ones... Can they all be taken multiple times? And if so, you know, is there an upper limit? You know, is there a limit to how many times you can take a one that can be taken multiple times? Also, the two-pointers, would you have to spend two points each time you take it if you can... Take it multiple times. I think you probably would in that in that case. Although most of the two point ones that we saw didn't have effects that would imply that would imply mul that would imply that kind of multiple use thing. Yeah, most of the two pointers that we saw were uh, were uniques. In fact, mm -hmm. uniques or or ones where there wouldn't be much point to it because there isn't the Choo there isn't the choose option within them. Mm -hmm. 
Um, that now that be that being said, I don't mind. I don't mind the distinction between unique and non-unique. I think I think it's pretty clear as as far as those, especially some of them that you'd have to really argue with your GM about making that about getting a a unique expertise at a later point. Um, mm -hmm. And getting getting the t trying to save up for one of the two pointers is go is going to be a significant investment because remember you're only getting one expertise point every other level. Yeah. So you only have a maximum of ten by by the end of your uh, your career. Mm -hmm. But s some of those two pointers are uh, while they are a significant investment, they're a good one. Oh yeah. Now, the once so in in summary, when it comes to when it comes to skills, we definitely like the skill system, especially since investing points is not just numbers go up. There was a bit of that with the expertise, but it doesn't bother me as much as it bothers me in certain games. I'm well, and it's not just numbers go up in most cases; it's numbers go up plus other things. Mm-hmm. Or it's a or it's a automatic hit. Yeah. Auto hit dice are fun. Oh yeah. Now next week we will be ta we will be tackling the ma the magic system and wrapping and wrapping up this part of our of our look at Ve at Veil of the Void. And, and in two weeks, it'll be all about the toy box. <laughs> so, please, please look forward to please look forward to it as as always. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers, present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>